coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. On this episode, Rich and Jim look back over 57 episodes. And now, Rich Redman. Jim, how are you doing, buddy? You know, we're in two cities. This is a, there's a first time for everything. I'm coming to you from Los Angeles. You're in Nashville. I've been in quarantine for eight weeks. What's happening with you? Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm tired of hearing COVID-19. I hate those words. COVID-19, shelter in place, social distance. How about that? How about the Cuomo show? The guy turned, he's got his own show on on CNN. He pretty, uh, he's got his own show. It's incredible. 9 a.m. and Pacific Standard every day. Good for him. Mm. Seems like uh, I'm, t- I'm, see- I'm tired of seeing COVID updates on websites. <sighs> and, you know, ch- click here for our latest. Co- I don't want to. I don't want to know. I, I don't want to. I don't want to be updated about COVID. I'm tired of hearing about it. Have you been able to get all your cleaning supplies and everything? What's that? Have you been able to get all your cleaning supplies and everything uh, relatively easy in Nashville? You know, I, I've been acting business as usual my friend uh i love that well your your job is is you're in that closet recording voiceover you're producing podcasts you're raising a family so you're kind of a stay-at-home entrepreneur or entrepreneur yeah or entrepreneur, entrepreneur. Yeah. yeah is it where do you put the emphasis that's right on the wrong syllable it's crazy yeah yeah, yeah. uh you know, but, the, but the good things that come out in this scenario are uh, some of the, you know, we have John Krasinski, who you know from The Office. He played Jim Halpert, who's mm-hmm. doing uh, SGN. Have you been watching those little episodes he's been putting out? You were telling me about that, and I need, really need to check it out. Yeah, some good news. He's, he's publishing all the good news. The other day, he had uh, some people who were supposed to be wed, so he surprised them. Uh, apparently, they... He proposed to him, to the guy that that did this proposed to his soon to be wife, uh, similarly to how Jim Halpert proposed to Pam on the office in the gas station on the way to uh, New York City. Well, that's incredible. And he filmed it and he turned it into all the different people on the office, and um, he got their attention. So Jim or uh, John Krasinski had them on uh, his show, and he just recently was um he got uh unable to do marriages weddings uh, what do you call that oh yeah you're you become a uh, ordained minister ordained minister and he then surprised them by having and this is all over zoom by by the way mm-hmm. he then surprised them by having their parents and friends and things of that nature um and then he went further and had jenna fisher come on and make a cameo as a uh, maid of honor for the guy's wife and Jim or uh, Jim uh, John Krasinski played the best man, and then he further surprised them with the dance off they did when Jim and Pam got married, uh, with uh, in the office with the rest of the cast of the office. So it was a very very big surprise for the uh, newlyweds. What a nice thing to do! Yeah, you know, and, and if if you're listening to this, it's business as usual for Jim and I. We're just freaking frack. We're oil and water. We're oil and vinegar we're fred and barney we're doing our thing man you know and but if you're watching this it looks like i'm about to get down and sing it's not unusual to be loved by because i am holding a wired sure 58 microphone and we're going into a zoom h6 recorder and this is literally our first uh bi-coastal episode where Jim and I are utilizing this crazy Zoom technology. And then our next episode will be probably our friend Jimmy Pemberton, who's a great drummer and entrepreneur in the Boston area. But Jim and I just wanted to uh, test this technology and we thought that we would do an episode where we look back at the first 57 episodes of our little uh, project here. Jim's like, you should you should take your podcast to the next level. You should double down. You should release two episodes a week. And look what we did, Jim. When do we start this thing, man? August of last year. God, this is great. It's like coming up on a year. 
57 episodes and thank you thank you everyone who has been listening to the show and you know you were consuming it on your your ride to work or at the gym and now no one is going anywhere we hope you're still listening but Jim what uh, what look back at that first episode the pod goats Phil and Campbell Valentine what Phil, good sports uh, Valentine yeah feeling uncomfortable <laughs> what that's his thing that's his every time you listen to him oh, it's, is it's that a his little thing? bit uncomfortable oh uh, yeah and his son Campbell C- Campbell great guys they have a great podcast they're very prolific they put out no less than one a week and they explore things like um, mysteries, uh, the seven wonders of the world, uh, gossip, the history of everything. Yeah, it's a really good thing. And Campbell does a lot of work uh, preparing for those episodes because he does a lot of research on the topics and mm-hmm. they just kind of play off of each other and do a great job. Um, what were, Do you remember some of the things we talked about in that episode? We talked about... Go for it. Um, Kara, my girlfriend, is like five feet away. She's trying to open the sliding door to the patio, and it's going to be noisy, but hey, this is what, you know, we're shelter in place here, guys. Don't let any of the COVID-19 in, for crying out loud. It might come, hey, you know, come, watch out it might, for might, the, be, might be transported by the murder hornets. What about all these television hosts that always have these great makeup artists and blowout artists, and they have to do all their stuff, they have to do all their hair by themselves in the morning. It's like, whoa. God forbid. Yeah, my God, but it's but it's a notable noticeable difference. Um, what did what did we talk about? We talked about uh, North Carolina having a, talking like you got a rubber band in your mouth. Yeah, that is an accent where you can get like three or six syllables out of one short word. Yeah. Otherwise, it yeah. was a very worthwhile re- episode to go back and listen to. It was our first one. We were beginning. Mm-hmm. It sound it sound we sound a lot better now, but you know. Well, we were working out the, you know, what what frickin' frack does, and you know what what our job descriptions are, and the and how we could blend. I didn't even have a microphone at that point. Yeah, it was crazy. Now, here's the funny deal about that: is you had a microphone, but it was in a box in another closet or something, yeah. and it was it was right in front of our nose the whole time. I am schwitzing today, guys. I am sweating, um, but I, I am not on purpose. I am not taking this jacket off. Nope. <laughs> um, now, one of my favorite episodes was, and I was so proud of ourselves for getting Victoria Jackson. Yeah, yeah, it was a big get. And it's and, and like all things in life, it kind of kind came through a relationship. I was taking a comedy class you know with my local teacher there alan dysert in nashville uh who was on some um he was on some soap operas in the 80s and he's a great teacher great guy he's like hey you want to take a comedy class with victoria jackson she was this awesome teacher i said you want to be on my podcast and she was all over the place that day she even took a phone call on the air a lot of stories a lot of stories yes i hope she has lauren michaels Yeah, yeah, and she had an interesting. She has an interesting relationship with her husband. Yeah, it, it kind of got weird. Tempestuous. <laughs> Tempestuous. It was. Uh, it kind of got to the point where we were like, "Wow, you're you're really kind of revealing some stuff here." <laughs> she was. And we're. This is not going to be edited out. I hope you know that. So. <laughs> and then one of your favorite episodes and a lot of people's favorite episodes and they'll, they, when we get back to normal, we should probably have them on as somewhat of recurring guests, but my friends, Kurt and Tully, the three Kings. Now, why did you like that episode so much? I liked it. Cause it's always funny to see you guys get together and cut up. Um, you know, each other so well, and there is kind of no holds barred conversation going on. So when you listen to that episode, it's a glimpse behind the scenes of, uh, you know, 23 years of friendship and um, camaraderie and just, you know, how you guys supported each other as peers and mm-hmm. uh, just good stuff. I mean, uh, we, we kind of got a little bit into the Vegas stuff, uh, which is very um, emotional, but, mm-hmm. um, but real. I, I appreciate that episode because we got authentic. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, authenticity, um, and 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 obviously the guys are great. And also, there was a controversial moment in there where we revealed three bands that we consider to be highly overrated. And I'll let you listen to the. Uh, and of course, their music is fantastic. But Kurt and Tully are very opinionated about about these certain bands that are like, eh, I don't get it. I got it. I understood what they were saying. Do you remember what the yeah. bands were? Rolling Stones, Pink Floyd. And Rush. We won't say 
who decided on what. <laughs> yes. I'm actually I'm actually wearing a Pink Floyd. I'm I'm wearing a Pink Floyd Pink Floyd shirt right now, which is highly ironic. What about why was okay, well, was it okay? Was it you that didn't like I, I think it was you that didn't like Pink Floyd. I mean, Pink Floyd is great. It's all masterful, but if if I want to rock out to a band, I mean, they're not a rocking band. They're a uh, No, it's I know. I some, get it. Drop some acid and yeah. uh, look at the Pretty Lights band. I know. It is. But uh yeah. So so it's it, it would be difficult to say that they're overrated because it just goes in that category of it's a certain type of mood, it's a certain type of performance art. Uh, you know, it's not the same thing as me wanting to just put on Rod Stewart's Every Picture Tells a Story and and uh, Elton John's Greatest Hits and all that. Different thing, you know. Uh, Eddie Bears, one of the most recorded drummers in history, year after year after year, episode four. Uh, one of the guys that really helped me get established or get started in Nashville. Uh, very knowledgeable. They say that the lifespan of a recording drummer is five years and Eddie Bears has been doing it for 35 years yeah and he's is, uh he was one of the first instances it's the first time i've ever met eddie i've always heard about him um but he really uh impressed me with his humility and that is a theme throughout all the guests we've had that have had amazing huge careers in music in a lot of different things we have yet to have the ego come on to the show you know what I mean? Yeah, I just think that by <clears throat> curating this list of guests that are we have mostly personal relationships with, I mean, that kind of takes care of itself. If you look at somebody like, say, a Michael Elsner, who's a very established composer and who writes a lot of music for TV and film as an expert on licensing, he came in and just dropped some serious knowledge bombs and was just like, look, at this industry is changing. You know, this is my product. I'm happy to help you. Uh, great guy. Great conversation. That was a that was an episode of you know let the music business almost come to you and find it'll help you if you if you're open to those opportunities you can almost find your place within it and that's kind of what he did but he's also got a um, he's got quite the desire to be a live musician at least you know get it on one tour so he gets it out of his system right I know and he's going to be waiting yet another year for that because look at our industry i mean if you're listening to this in real time yeah let's not even talk about it um how about episode six parmalee this is a band from parmalee north carolina and they're a they're literally a family band very knowledgeable about very knowledgeable about trees as well they they came out to my after the show was over we yeah. did a little bit of a side video where uh um, they were looking at your tree situation around the house and mm -hmm. we put that up on the uh, Facebook, I believe. Yeah. Kind of totally. like a little bit of a rich Redmond show bonus. And, uh, you got to see them consult and do what they do. Yeah. They saw some very sad looking trees around my, around my property. And they're like, that is the sad, cause I have this sad, depressed, droopy Christmas tree on the side of my house. And they're like, that's Charlie Brown long you know, freaking Peter North tree that you got. I, I said it looked like Zelda, the, the sister from the sh uh, Pet Cemetery. So ugly. Oh, oh, my God. Now, episode seven. Yeah, Daru. Uh, Daru Jones. Like, just the, uh, the title of the episode, episode seven, was Three Leos Walk Into a Room. Yeah. And uh, just a cool guy that really wanted to uh, establish something different for himself from the way he played to the way he dressed to the way he set up his drums. He's a very unique individual. He is very unorthodox the way he sets up his drums. Very, uh, um, not sure if I could play drums that way. <laughs> but hey, it works for him. Oh yeah, man. I don't, I don't, yeah, I would, I think, yeah, he plays traditional. So that snare angle works for him where the snare is actually facing away from him. I would have such a hard time with that. <clears throat> and, uh, um, episode number eight, all I'm going to say for David Santos is squirrel. <laughs> well, he had five window browsers of stories open on his storytelling laptop and we were trying to get him to close any one of them. And yeah. he, he just would not finish do it. the story. He didn't. And he wouldn't there finish. Were great stories. They were about legendary bands and playing with Fleetwood Mac. And then you know, Squirrel, he'd go off down a tangent, and then we'd be like, yep. okay, so 
getting back to the story we started an hour and a half ago, because I think yeah. that, was a, that was like a two-hour episode. <laughs> It was our, it, I think it was one of our only two hour episodes. I am totally sweating here. And I also, I, I have some cool lighting on me right now, Jim. Actually, right here, um, I have been slowly but surely putting together basically a, a West Coast multimedia setup here. So right. I'll have a mic stand. I'll have, I got my cool backdrop. I'm going to have some other cool backdrops. I have lighting. Um, putting it all together here. I think, so I, um, yeah, his, his episode was. Um I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna actually gonna put some money out there and say that by the end of this episode you're gonna be uh, taking that jacket off. <laughs> I'm schwitzing, my God. Um, <laughs> so David, yeah, David Santos. I mean, we've known each other a good twenty years in Nashville, and he has played with everybody: Fleetwood Mac, yeah. Melissa Etheridge, a uh, lot of stories. Fantastic bass player. Uh, now, one of your buddies, um, Good Time Tommy, on episode ten. Tell us about That's Tommy. Right. Good Time Tommy. Uh, Real estate guy and entre entrepreneur. How do you say it? Entrepreneur. 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 <laughs> entrepreneur. Um, yeah, and and just kind of a, a sales business coach out of uh, Murfreesboro. <laughs> <clears throat> he's a guy that really has, uh, you know, he he's a, he's a personality man. He, to, to you know, for someone who's in the real estate business, uh, very. I always told him that he'd make a great morning guy at a radio station personality um and then we were asking him questions he's like no 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 no. i'm gonna ask you questions yeah. he and he proceeded right around on us he really did and then he brought his uh sassy wife with him and she was wearing her va va voom um workout pants well that's the thing is i, I don't think you could uh you know yeah that's uh, it was uh it was very um interesting <laughs> so to speak <laughs> Good for them, man. They're newlyweds. How about episode 11? Harry McCarthy, owner of Drum Paradise in Nashville. Now, this is a company that basically all the high-end drummers in Nashville that have to go do a recording session, they store their drums with this fine gentleman, and then this box truck picks all the drums up, drops them off. He sets everything. It's his total white glove treatment. And in between, he's worked with every famous drummer in the industry, including Max Weinberg of Bruce Springsteen's band for a decade. Yeah. That's another case of let the music business find a place for you type of scenario. Uh, he capitalized on his gifts and talents with uh, drum teching, but also kept, you know, uh, that, that entrepreneurial spark was within him with starting uh, Drum Paradise and really scaling it up in L.A. And then he brought the whole concept to Nashville. And, you know, he was he's uh, one of the few men standing in that business uh, doing what he does. And he does it very well, but also mm -hmm. keeps his toe in the water with uh, touring, which is what he loves and teching. Totally. And I think that's a great business model for, you know, the creative arts is, you know, to have, do as many things within that umbrella as you can, because as we learning right now, like the entire touring industry is on uh, hold, kind of the recording industry, you know, is on. Yeah, it's it's all, you know, I'm going to so maybe I'm going to I'm going to kind of as we kind of transition here, I'm going to say for the next episode 12 with Mr. Aaron McGill. Yeah. For those of you who are listening, when you listen to this show. You may not know a lot of the different people that we've brought on because there may be some of them are behind the scenes. Um, you know, some of them are, are, are more notable than others. But let me tell you right now, when you listen, you know, just kind of sequentially through the entire spectrum of the show, we've done, I th I'd say you and I have done a pretty good job of making really good conversations out of anybody who comes on the show because in the beginning it was about getting people on that we know like and love and and just uh, just to get episodes going i think altogether every episode has got just chock full of something in it for everybody yeah. it's just entertaining yeah. so don't let you know s someone's name you're not familiar with stop you from listening to the episode definitely take a listen to it and uh, of course i want to say you know leave some comments rate us subscribe and all that fun stuff yeah, there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, I, I mean, I just, it's just a, a joy to look back at this list of people. Uh, Aaron is one of those guys that dresses everyone, every celebrity in Nashville from, you know, Kenny Chesney to yep. Tim McGraw to Jason Aldean. Um, and, you know, of course, whenever I have to do, whenever I need anything altered or make guest custom, I, I get it done with him. He's a great guy, really knows his craft. Yeah. And, um, you know, and there, yes, there is a lot of podcasts out there that they will hit you at the beginning, the middle and the end of the podcast, asking you for ratings, asking you for reviews. We don't want to 
overkill it too much with you guys, but we do appreciate that stuff because the more reviews that you leave us, the more five-star ratings you leave with us, it's going to help people find the show easier because let's face it, there's one million podcasters out there and to cut through all the red tape and all the junk and all the noise, you know, we need your support. So if you love the show, leave us a great rating there and a five-star review. Well, thankfully, this podcast is the best produced podcast in the world right now. So, well, I'm telling you what, it's, I mean, the, the production value is high. And I love the fact that we can jump in on this thing right now. And uh, I feel like you look way cooler than me, Jim. You got, you know, the nice headset, you got the backdrop. It's good. I got the pencil thin microphone. Oh, that's very nice. The show. Very nice. Yeah, and we had Chuck Tilly on, good buddy of mine, episode 13, who's done a lot, a lot of touring, a lot of recording, a lot of showcases, a lot of television work uh, in Nashville, and we talked a lot about, about skill set um, and, uh, you know, navigating this crazy business together. Our, our buddy Angela Prophet on episode 14, she's a friend of yours. I learned she's a lot on that one. Yeah. What did you learn? A lot of good stories in there. A lot, you know, if you're entrepreneurial minded or business minded, she is a master. She's a master at time management. That's her thing. As and well she as pulled up in front of my house with a very nice Porsche, Porsche. SUV. Is it Porsche or Porsche? Uh, is Porsche. it pasty or pasty? Is, is it, it pasty or pasty? Tondra or Tondre? Is it Sabian or Sabian, Sabian or Sabian? <laughs> Sabian. Is it? Escalade or Escalade? <laughs> or Escalade? You're, you're nuts. Uh, we could do that all day. Angela but we're not a, going she's a, to. She's, a, um, she's one, of the notor- mo- most, one of the more notable female entrepreneurs and business leaders in Nashville overall. She runs a hell of a wedding planning business. I mean, mm-hmm. amazing. I mean, just, you know, stellar stuff. Hundred thousand mm-hmm. plus dollar wed- weddings. Oh, yeah. I'm sure that's on hold for her for just a bit, right? <sighs> she's got a she's got a jib and jab, you know. Like, you know, if we're not growing and we're changing and if we're not evolving, we're rotting on the vine. You and I talk about it all the time, you know. It's gonna come back, okay? Stop talking about COVID. Let it go away. I well, you know, it's I just sneezed. Do, do I have it? Am I symptomatic? Uh, look, look at my hair. I need a haircut, man. I need a haircut bad. This this is huge. You know, this hair. About, this is like and, this is like uh, it's what I like about you. I got huge hair right now, folks. It looks good though. You remember the Romantics? I do. I met them. I actually that, interviewed them. Yeah, back in the day, the drummer had huge hair. It was oh, big yeah. hair. Yeah, I had huge hair. You did. I still have huge hair. It's just hitting the <laughs> side of my scalp. How about Gary Forkham? Gary, hey Forkham. Yeah, episode he was, fifteen. He's the guy that if you opened up any drumming magazine in the eighties and nineties, you would see his ad. Forks Drum Closet. Yeah. In Nashville. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was just. You know, it still kind of is. Uh, the location has changed. Uh, Gary decided to sell the business, and he he actually owns the property that the business was in, which was very forward thinking. And now he's still <laughs> on as a consultant for the new business. But it literally Forks Drum Closet started as a closet, and uh, he grew it into just a world class business, and it became a hub for all the working drummers in Nashville to go out and they would hang at the drum shop in between the recording sessions and then other you know drummers would knew that the recording drummers and that the touring drummers that were coming through town were all hanging out there so it became a total social hang what i got out of that episode was an element of how to take on the big boys and win so he Mm -hmm. you know had survived many seasons of threats that came into town you had sam ash and of course the guitar center you know behemoth corporate behemoths that came in that were threatening you know his livelihood, but forced him to pivot and change and, you know, figure out, okay, how am I going to weather the storm against, you know, that. And he was able to, by just being Uber local and customer centric, you you know, hashtag be them centric. And, Mm -hmm. you know, some, if a drummer wanted to try out a kit, Hey man, let's go set it up and uh, you try it out for the night. If you like it, great. Let's, uh, let's make a deal. That's, that's where, you know, the rubber meets the road in those types of scenarios when, uh, you make it an experience and a lot more about the customer. And, you know, he, st- he, he built a hell of a business. I mean, it's. Yeah. Uh, it's and I, and I, I wish more people would make it about the customer because I, I do 
feel as though the customer is always right, right? So, you know, when I'm playing live, who's my customer? My customer is Jason Aldean in my band. And when they request something to be faster, slower, bluer, greener, louder, softer, you know, they're the customer. So, you know, I aim to please. But, um, God, I wish I can get more real people on the phone. You know, going through this COVID thing is really interesting because if I call to do the customer service thing, I could tell. The other day, I called some girl at for FedEx customer service, and I heard roosters crowing in the background. It was like, go, 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 go. It was like, that. I'm like, what? She was definitely home on her farm or something. Like, they were not in the call center. And I always ask them, I'm like, do you miss the call center? And they're like, one guy's like, oh, I love it. I love being at home. I can get it, set my own hours, whatever. It's private. Um, and then another guy was like, man, I miss my community. I miss the camaraderie. I like going to the place and having the break room and the water cooler and the, the whole deal. So this thing is affecting people in all sorts of different ways, you know? You know, it's funny to hear the see the, the dynamic we're having while we're doing this, even though we're, you know, 2,000 miles apart doing it. It's crazy. Yeah. I might have I to. I like being uh, in person with you, so. I do, too. I think there's it's something even like, you know, the whole thing of like a plane. People are like, hey, do you like this whole making music from afar thing? And I'm like, yeah, it's it's like it's here to stay. It's not going away. I embrace change, but there's nothing like being able to just reach out and flick the bass player's butt or, you know, point at the guitar player that's five feet away or wink at the lead singer and you're all in the same room. And I love that, you know, with Michael Knox and this whole team of guys that we have in Nashville recording records, I already got the email from Michael Knox and his team, and it's like, hey, we got five records to record. Redmond, you're probably going to have to jump on a Southwest Airlines flight at some point here and come and start doing some recording. Here's the deal. I trust and love everybody that I'm going to be in the recording studio, but how do you social distance in a recording studio? And you're, you're kind of going on a faith that everybody has been doing the right thing. Yeah. Plus, you know, you know, it's okay to be exposed to something. You got to build up an immunity to it. Yeah, but I just don't want my lungs to collapse and then just die at the tender age of 49. Well, you do have one foot in the grave, so. <laughs> I miss our sound effects. <laughs> I really do. So what about episode 16? Peter Coleman and Richard Dodd. From Jolly Foggy London. Oh, yeah. London, yes. They grew up in the same town. They were childhood friends, and they made it across the pond all the way to sunny Los Angeles, and then both ended up in Nashville, and, and as a team, Pete has engineered every Jason Aldean record, and Richard Dodd has mastered every J Jason Aldean record, and these guys go to uh, lunch every Saturday together. They're like um, the odd couple. In a way, yeah. Uh, yeah. Peter's one of those guys that... He doesn't care who's around. He's going to speak his mind, but he's going to do it with that British accent that makes it sound classy. Yeah. And uh, Richards, he's, he's kind of the same way. They're just like, hey, man, you know, we know what we're his, our history was, and uh, mm. we've kind of earned the license to be who we are, and it's just worked out for him. And, uh, oh, it totally did. They, uh, it, it was kind of funny because if you're an audiophile, that is a good episode to listen to because we really got deep with uh, – just music production and production techniques and all that fun stuff. I had my uh, long time question answered in that episode of saying, hey, you know, what exactly is mastering? Isn't, isn't that kind of like sugarcoating what has been done in the studio, giving it a second set of ears? And he goes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly okay. what it, that's exactly what it is, Jim McCarthy. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> I mean, and those guys have worked with everyone from like the Dixie Chicks to Pat Benatar to uh, Blondie to the Knack. If you like, do do da do do da do da. That's Peter Coleman. So I think you, everyone will get a kick out of that episode. Um, Jim, what do you think about our our sponsors, the School of Rock? Tell what, you know. What are your thoughts on the School of Rock? School of Rock is uh, necessary. They're they're kind of like they're very similar to when I learned radio. I went to the Connecticut Schools of Broadcasting, and their big thing was learn by doing, mm. and that's the way I learn best. Is uh, you know I learned how to cut and splice tape back in the day, and um, you know uh, do an air break and all that fun stuff. And we learned by actually performing. So at the School of Rock, you're going to get the same kind of experience. Uh, they don't put on shows. They don't learn music to put on shows. They put on shows to learn music. So yeah. 
that's uh, that's their big angle, and it's been working out for them. And of course, when you have uh, you know Angie and Kelly McCright at the helm, they really care about their students. Yeah, and if and like there's some talking folk- about. Yeah, I mean, there's if there, your parents out there that are really interested in get adding to the list of cool things that you are exposing your kids to. Maybe it's ballet or uh, hip hop dancing or taking piano lessons. You can add the School of Rock to uh, their cachet, and uh, you can contact them and tell them that Rich and Jim sent you, and that's Franklin at SchoolofRock.com or Nashville at SchoolofRock.com. Over 250 locations in the world, Franklin. And and Nashville locations, always the best. Always kinda, the best. Program. We're biased. We think that the Franklin and Nashville locations are the... Uh, well, in the, a lot of the Battle of the Bands, those two locations, they would win, you know? And and also, they really like to outdo... Bands. They like to outdo themselves, you know? They like to, uh, they like to um, do these big nights at the Ryman where, like, the entire schools will play... Um, these themed concerts and these kids are incredible they're playing rush they're playing zeppelin they're playing you know abba they're playing motown they're playing the police it's incredible and not only are they just are hitting the hitting the right notes at the right time they're performing i mean i've seen kids strutting around the stage like mick jagger like doing the whole start me up thing you know pouting there it's that, pretty was there was there a keith richards counterpart doing the same thing yeah, I mean the kids are. It's it's a great thing. I, I'm a, I'm a big believer in it, and so thank you, School of Rock, for sponsoring our show for all these months. Speaking of Keith Richards, have you uh, ever you, you have you seen the Pirates of the Caribbean movies with Johnny Depp? Yeah, he based it on Keith. He did. Yeah, it's, hilarious it's good to, to watch. It it it, it really is, and um, <laughs> that's probably got to be pretty flattering for Keith, right? I would imagine so. I mean, yeah, why not? He's Those guys are probably, they're probably friends. They're kind of like up there with Christopher Walken impressions. I mean, he's a parody of himself now. I mean, Johnny Depp could have gone into rock and roll. He moved to Los Angeles to play music. He got sidetracked with this whole acting thing. Um, but I've seen videos of him sitting in with Marilyn Manson. I've seen videos of him sitting in with Jeff Beck. He's got this Hollywood Vampires project with Joe Perry. I mean, the guy is active, man, and he's good. Well, he's, he's also, a multi-talent. Uh, he kind of got in with all the big filmmaker, the not Wes Craven, but uh, the guy Tim Burton. Night, Tim Burton, you know. Yeah, Tim Burton. They're, they're, like he, he's like the Rich Redmond of Nashville producers. You know, they just kind of go. Tim Burton just goes to him. Like Tim Burton's Michael Knox, and you're like Johnny Depp. You know. Hey man, I'll, I'll <laughs> I, I will, I will take it. I'm gonna have to get way more like jewelry and th- layers though. I think you just start. I think you need to start wearing feathers in your hair. What do you think of that? <laughs> I don't know, but but you know what I have done recently. I always thought it was somewhat pretentious, mm-hmm. um, but I have been uh, wearing way more bandanas, you know, like around my neck, and because it started with the like, okay, I'm going to go for a run with COVID, and I'm going to like wear this around my neck, and then when I see somebody, boom, I pop it on my face, and then I just started wearing it all the time. I'm like, this is pretty cool. Yeah, it's almost like your little, your little. It's like a fashion thing that every wow. five years I got to change it up. You should get like, you should just start dressing like Negan from The Walking Dead, and carry around uh, a baseball bat. Yeah, you know what? One of the gals in my acting class. Every Thursday we have class and we practice every day. Chloe, she was on uh, in sixteen and seventeen. She was on those two years. She was on The Walking Dead. Really? Yeah, and Play then the main character. And, sh- um, yeah, I will. I will look it up. But she was very, very active in a lot of the stuff. So I got to go back and rewatch it all. And then another one of my uh, fellow uh, acting students is. My friend Kit, who was on the very first episode of Come and Knock on Our Door. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what show is that? Three's Company. I'll do the Nor- the Mr. Roper look right now. Yeah, do it. Yeah, you got to break the wall. I got to do it to the camera. Oh, yeah, totally. When he's so yeah. proud of himself. I the love Mr. it. Mr. Roper look. 
Hey, so Katie Cook and Adam Schoenfeld, that is a yeah. Nashville power couple. So you got Katie Cook, who's been hosting every show on CMT for the last 20 years. She's also a musician. And then her husband, Adam, who I've known for 24 years in Nashville, not only did he record and tour with Big and Rich, he also plays every guitar solo on every Jason Aldean record. Uh, we've done tons of show. I mean, he's just like played with the who's who of, of Nashville recording artists, and they're just so cute together. They are. Uh, one thing I discovered in that show is how um, conspiratorial Katie can be. She's oh, she's UFOs. into UFOs and pyramids yeah. and and uh, yeah. Curious to see what her take on this whole thing that's going down these days is. Ooh, that's a that's a yeah. I should text her and see like <laughs> you got the inside scoop. What's up? You know, that's not a bad you, show. I think I, I think we need to do an episode with Katie Cook and reprise her as a guest and uh, talk about her. Oh, the conspiracy stuff. stuff. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I mean, think about it. She really has some thoughts on, like, say, building the pyramids. I mean, I, I still haven't seen the pyramids. I've been to Egypt. I saw a lot of camels. Um, I still haven't seen the pyramids, but those things are massive, and those giant rocks – we didn't have machinery. How? I mean, I don't care how many slaves you have. How is the, that going to uh, happen? It was the alignment of the realms as uh, as exhibited in Thor, the Dark World. Oh, now we're going to go to Marvel. Did. Okay. Did I just do that? I'm sorry. <laughs> Me? Um, Danny Gottlieb, four-time Grammy winner, episode 18. Legendary drummer legendary and now he plays with the gary sinise band he's gotta have fun doing that the, the lieutenant dan band right yeah the lieutenant band again uh gary sinise from is it ncis or csi or it's one of those there's so many is it ncsi or N ncis oh, N <laughs> or cis the shows are so funny they're so predictable um it, it's it, no i mean it, <laughs> <laughs> a lot, no, just a lot of those uh, one-hour, yeah. uh, no, they call them procedurals. Yeah, so it's basically the crime happens, right? And the then, crime happens. And then uh, David comes out with his sunglasses off, and he says something really campy and off the, off the hip, and then he yep. puts his sunglasses on. Yeah. Then, <laughs> da, 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 da. And I think you, blew, like you blew your microphone out. Did I? <laughs> Uh, Every now Chris Rodriguez, that. man. Chris Rodriguez, episode 19. Oh, yeah. He looks like uh, Clint Holmes from Vegas. Yeah. Chris Rodriguez. Is, Vegas is shut down right now. They're doing a great job with the curve. Um, but yeah, but he's so talented as a songwriter, as a producer, as a, as a writer, as a guitar. I love player. that you're such a positive guy, but you keep on reiterating the COVID thing, and it's just so damn depressed. Vegas is shut down right now, but man, what a great guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. I have never had so m much, or is it many, groceries at one time. Like as a as a man who has been spending his entire life in airports and backstages and tour buses for the last twenty four years, I have never had a full refrigerator like this. Week after week, going to Trader Joe's, I got my salads, I got my chicken salad, I got my my eggplant i could warm up i got my pesto pizza i got it's i'm loaded up it's incredible you know why they call it covid 19 because you COVID gain 19 what yeah i gained my well i didn't gain 19 but that's that, that's the oh. on, ongoing joke you gain 19 yeah you know the funny thing is is that i have made a point of just telling myself get out there and just worship that sun well, and I literally sometimes i'll just go out there and speed walk for two hours and you know well, get all that vitamin d and if you it, the, the deal is on anything is the consistency even if you just walk every day for no less than 20 minutes you're going to keep that stuff off you know your oh, totally. uh, yeah it's great well, i mean now another thing you know speaking of you know looking for the bright side and all these th this crap that we're going through um you've always been talking about buying a house in in uh, california they're on the brink of economic collapse so after that happens dude go for it <laughs> are they really buddy totally i don't know they're, they're for a 40 billion dollar deficit something like that that's yeah, when, they, is, when the rest of us had to go and bail out the state of California. That's when you double down and buy yourself a house. Yeah. 
Yeah, because right now, $500,000 still gets you a real beater in North Hollywood. And you're like, Shoe what? Oh, that's a good deal. Everyone's got bars on their windows. It's like, yeah, I'll, I'll take that for 500 and then I have to put 200 in it to fix it up. The Rich Redmond Show will be right back. Well, our big tagline has been inspiring kids to rock on stage and in life. We changed it, actually, to inspiring the world to rock on stage and in life because when kids are here, they learn so much more than music. They learn how to be on a team. They learn responsibility. They learn to take responsibility for their actions. They learn to organize their time. And we try to teach them, you know, not to be that person that nobody wants to be on a tour bus with. <laughs> Connect with School of Rock today. Search School of Rock Franklin or Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. Tyler Farr. Yeah. Yeah, but there's... Tyler the, Farr, our first pseudo-high-profile guy, right? Uh, I mean, totally ho profile Yeah. He, I mean, he's got a new record. It's going to be coming out on Night Train Records with Al Dean and the guys producing, and I played drums on it. I think he released his uh, uh, single uh, about a month ago, maybe six weeks ago. Um only truck in town i think it's uh, called don't quote me uh but that was fun he's just a funny guy he'll have to be a recurring if you listen to that episode what you're going to get out of it is the fact that uh he really enjoyed breaking from the normal boring radio interviews and he had fun he really opened up told some funny stories and uh i mean we talked about uh eating you know testicles and stuff like that bull before. testicles yeah rocky mountain something oysters yeah. Oysters. <laughs> Rocky Mountain oysters. Uh, and your adventures and doing those kinds of things. So, I mean, yeah, he was uh, definitely something you better sh you should check out. Episode 20 with Tyler. Yeah. Fong. I hope he's doing Nashville legend. Coming. Chris McHugh in episode 21. Yeah. yeah I mean, a, 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 a body of work recording for all the top producers in Nashville for t over 20 years and yeah. touring forever with uh, Chris McHugh, uh, uh, Keith Urban, and um, yeah, just a, uh, a rare sighting, a public sighting of a studio drummer, you know? Yeah. <laughs> we kind of got a little bit of a bear his soul moment glimpse in that episode. He was uh, really reflecting on uh, his life towards mm. the end, I believe. Yeah, we go through these seasons of life. I'm going through a different season, you know, and uh, it's it was fun to, to kind of share that publicly together. Mm -hmm. Episode 22, Dusty Slay. Our uh, first comedian. First comedian. Well, besides uh, Victoria. Victoria. Yeah. yeah. Dust, Dusty Slay is killing it. He's slaying it. He's doing a lot of stuff with the, with the Opry. He's very active at Zany's. He's uh, always touring. I think he's going to be back to touring. I think he's doing the Dallas... Uh, improv this week so he's going to brave it I guess people are going to start getting out there they want to laugh he's always on that David Spade show lights out with David Spade just what a hilarious remember, guy what I remember about that episode is that we actually gave him material oh yeah and I got to see him try it out that night at Zany's How did it, go? It, it went really well I think yeah hopefully he's still building on it and reworking the joke a little bit and uh, I bought a Dusty Slate t-shirt, which is, um, I love it. I love to support my, my fellow artists. You know, I've got, um, you know, the, 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 the acting community in Los Angeles is kind of like the, the music community in Nashville, where if people are going through rough times or, you know, I mean, obviously a lot of actors are uh, baristas, they're Uber drivers or they're waiters. And so that are bartenders and that whole thing shut down. So I've got people in my class that are literally, they're out of groceries and they're like, well, I just took up fasting because I literally have no groceries. And we have, you know, uh, been venmoing each other you know or just it feels good you know i mean i'm so lucky that i have food in the pantry and there's folks out there that don't so we've been kind of helping each other out and that feels good well that's good that's awesome of you i i would hope that a lot of people in this scenario because i've been helping some people too um my next door neighbor just got let go from his job and uh, you know, just figuring out, okay, what can we do? Who do we need to help? How do, you know, what should I be listening for? What do you do? Who do I know that might be hiring for you and get you back up on your feet? Cause I know exactly where you are having three kids, a wife and a mortgage and one income. So wow. for anybody who's listening, 
you know, this is a good time to reflect on, uh, you know, diversifying your income streams and figuring out how not to depend on one of them because it's one of but the it's hard to find, risks you can run. It's going to be very difficult to have to find a new job right now, don't you right. think? Yeah. <clears throat> well, that's where you got to tap into your entrepreneurial spirit and figure out how, you know, I tell people all the time when I got let go in 2016, look at me getting all dark here now. But when I got let go, it was a it was a bright spot because I had to figure out how to make stuff happen. So mm -hmm. it was all on me. And we, and you did. We made it and work. you're in we a closet work. right now. Yeah, I, I'm in a closet and I make money out of the closet. Among I love things. it. I love it, buddy. You're doing great. You're the um, ultimate uh, entrepreneur. Uh, right. You brought you brought in your buddy Bill Maddox, Bill who's Maddox. a body. He's a body language coach and, and a body language expert. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I and learned a lot about, about the different things and and attitudes and manners that you could and employ while you know meeting with people. You know, how are you holding yourself? Are you folding your fingers? Are you doing this? All sorts of cool stuff. And it all means something. Yeah. Nashville he goes, legend yeah. alert. <laughs> yeah. Nashville Another legend. One. Yeah. 20 episode 20. They haven't quite perfected the zoom thing where it's like, we're going to talk up on top of each other a little bit guys. So bear with us. But hopefully it's when, when Jim and I talk on each other a little bit, it's a joyous sound. It's like the audio version of peanut butter and chocolate coming together. Or peanut butter and pickles. Ugh. Only if you're pregnant. Lonnie Wilson, Lonnie Wilson, episode 24, much like Eddie Bears, also one of the most recorded drummers in history, uh, over 100 number one songs that he has played on. I thought I was cool with 27, um, but it, he's been in the game a long time. And there was a period of time where he didn't, he never toured. Now he's touring with the legendary George Strait, right? The King, uh, King George, as they like to say, but for a good 20 years there, he just just got his studio tan three times a day, six days a week, and just racked up the hits. So if you listen to a lot of that 90s, early 2000s, Faith Hill, um, uh, Martina McBride, Rascal Flats, that's Lonnie Wilson. Right? Yeah, Wild Angels. That's right. Yeah, man. Um, Angie and Kelly McCright, our friends from uh, episode 25 of the School of Rock in Nashville and Franklin. They're just a, a wonderful couple, and they've been together a long time, and they're doing a great thing for Nashville and music education. Dude, for, you know, and it's funny because they were married like 25 years or something, or maybe it was close to 30. So, yeah. What a good-looking couple. Yeah, they're sexy, aren't they? They kind of are. They got good kids. That all play music, you know. Now, now it's getting weird. <laughs> they get no, they got good kids, you know. Hey, you know, it's it's a luck of the draw with the kid thing. I mean, I'm not a parent, but I'm assuming you can uh, have that one romantic moment in under the sheets, right? And then for 18 years, you're either going to be cursing their name or praising their name. Well, in this day and age, for for me and my wife, it's hey, you wanna you wanna snuggle? And usually the snuggle comes with with the whole poke. Yeah, I'm snuggling. The, the code yeah. word. Code word. I I like um, I like spooning because spooning usually turns into forking. <laughs> 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 I wish we had our good. Uh, there you go. You know I've got some percussion instruments down in the car. I should probably grab those for our our next broadcast. Perhaps. How about how about episode twenty six with Billy Burnett, man? This this guy comes from a rockabilly royalty. I mean, his family essentially invented rockabilly music. Yeah. Wow. He's known nothing different. Yeah, and you had an interesting question. You were like, "Do you realize that your life is very unique? You know, it's not like other people have been like, yeah, we invented, we helped invent rock and roll." Yeah, you've lived your life playing music and doing things that other people would die to do. Yeah, he was in Fleetwood Mac for a long, long time. Yeah. And uh, what uh, tons of stories, and he has a, a a book out, so everyone should check that out, and that's a very... But you kind of get insulated <clears throat> when you, you get into that lifestyle. <clears throat> you know, I had um, in radio in Vegas, you'd meet so many people and celebrities, and eventually it was just kind of like, oh, hey, you know, it's Queen Latifah. Look at that. MC Hammer just came in. 
Oh, yeah. Sugar Ray Leonard. Oh, cool. I mean, once you realize that everybody poops and pays taxes, yeah. uh, you're it's a very grounding so thing. For a guy like Billy Burnett, he's like, ah, oh, I'm just playing with Fleetwood Mac. No big deal. Yeah, no big you know, deal. Let me just put the bass and the guitar down over here and uh, grab myself a sandwich and see what Mick is up to. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I know. It's got to be that normal. But but what's what's great is how those kind of things happen. So like Billy grew up in a in, in a family like that where that's all he knew. And then you've got like a working stiff like me who realizes that, oh my God, I really want to play the drums the rest of my life. Whatever these people are doing on MTV, I want to do it. But here's the problem. I'm I'm growing up in El Paso, Texas, which has no connection to the music industry. So what do I have to do? I got to go to the where the action is, and then you have to start at the bottom, shaking hands and crashing parties, and it's exhausting. It's like going through middle school and high school and college. You get back to the bottom of the barrel. Yeah. But, you know, what was that first moment for you that was kind of like, holy crap, I just played with? You remember who it was? Well, when I got that first marquee gig with Pam Tillis, that was a good thing for me in 1999 where somebody was setting up my drums and I got a check every two weeks and the people in the audience recognized all the words and knew all the words to her songs and then people would jump up on stage with us like Vince Gill and I would shake Pam Vince Gill's hand backstage and be like, what's up drummer, you know, let's do this for a tempo, da 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 and you just start... Now you're in a different circle, and then that leads to another circle. But that was a good he would, start. He would just call you drummer? No, he, you know. Uh, <laughs> that reminds me up? of a uh, moment from one of the Marvel movies, Infinity War, where Thor looks over at Groot and says, hey, meet my new friend, Tree. I like Groot. Movie. I love Groot. You like Groot? I like him when he's small. He's so cute. He reminds yeah. me of a little pug. I want to like put him on a leash. Do you, do, you, do you remember how he became small and why? No, you, you asked me about this, but I don't want him to go back to being big. I want him to stay small. Does he stay small? No, he's growing up. He's a teenager now. Oh, no. Yeah. I want him to stay small forever and so cute. We actually have a Groot planter in our living room. Well, that makes sense. It's like a bonsai. Yeah. Now, tell us about episode 27 with your friend Joe Lesh, who lives in my neighborhood. He does. He is a voiceover guy and coach and has been doing it a long, long time. I he think uh, this was the episode where he was uh, trying an, out an idea as he does a Mojo Friday video release every week. And uh, he was toying with the idea of getting a, uh, a puppet made in his own image. And you were kind of like, yeah, dude, I'm not sure if that's going <laughs> to really work out. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you did it in your way, your way of, of uh, a complimentary, uh, I guess, a backhanded compliment in a way where, you, you know, you kind of sometimes look at me and you go, Is that a new shirt? I go, yeah, it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's your subtle way of saying uh, it doesn't work for you, dude. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> but uh, you actually came out and directly told him, yeah, the, the puppet thing I'm not sure about, man. I'm not, That's I'm creepy, not buddy. Sure about <laughs> There was a movie in the 70s about a puppet. I got to remember what the hell it was. Um, There's a movie in the 90s and 2000s called Saw. And he, oh, yeah. He rides a tricycle. Oh, my God. That is scary. The first time he comes wheeling out on that squeaky little tricycle. Oh, my God. Every hair stood up on my neck. Oh, my God. Uh, Joe Turley, episode 28. Old, old Nashville pal of mine, man, that plays... All different kinds of rock, soul, funk, jazz music. I played a lot of a lot of his recordings. Just a killer, funky guy. And he was the first guy on our show to break out a musical instrument. He broke out that harmonica, and that was a cool moment. That was. That was just rich to hear it in your headphones when he just started really digging into it. Oh, man. Yeah. That's a good just prison cool. instrument. Very portable. Um Duncan Phillips, the drummer for the, I, I don't know if they won Grammys, but they're definitely award-winning Newsboys, Christian rock band. He's been with them for a long, long time, and that guy's got muscles on muscles. Dude, with his lifestyle, do you really need to be award-winning? What? You know what I mean? I mean, it's, it's just a successful career. Yeah. Massively successful. 
Yeah, I mean, year after year, he's up there with the uh, the the upside down drum riser. It spins and moves everywhere. And we were asking him about like you know the the safety of it, and does he feel comfortable up there? Yeah, crazy. He wouldn't give us the secrets to how they do it, though. He said he'd have to kill us. Yeah, yeah. Now, how about and our buddy Sean that. Silva, uh, episode thirty? Now, Sean Silva, also an award winning. Um, video director based in nashville we've done so many jason aldean videos together he's done all the kenny chesney videos and we are actually maybe in talks with him to maybe try to create some sort of an entertainment entity where we promote this new media that includes podcasting that's right absolutely he was he was the guy you know meeting him <clears throat> being a video producer myself but on a much lower level that was uh somewhat intimidating and i was like man you know i really have a tough time editing 4k video it just my my editor the computer doesn't chew through it <clears throat> he goes dude let's use proxies I'm going, oh yeah and it was one of those moments that you want to make you know indicate that you know what he's talking about but at the same time you're writing it down and you're going proxies look up what proxies are is that i e or y i uh, yeah uh, it's it hasn't worked out for me so i just keep on <laughs> great guy oh my god and he is a yeah. dead ringer for johnny depp he used to be johnny depp's stunt double is that true yeah he did a lot of like posters and that look-alike kind of stuff yeah really yeah Interesting. that's just that's really his essence uh, yeah totally now have a little cole marcus great kid uh, from california songwriter yeah, this is nice kid this is a um a notable episode. Do you remember? Yeah, because he won uh, America's Got Talent, right? Oh, no. America's well, Most Talented Kid? Yeah. What was the show? Talented. Yeah. He was in, um, I can only imagine, he played the mm. drummer in the movie. That's right. But also, this is the episode where we found out that Neil Peart had died. Oh, wow. That's right. Mm. Remember that? <sighs> but I remember how visibly shaken and affected he was. Like, he's like, are really you, hit him hard. He's like, are you, are you serious, Jim? Yeah. Yeah, you, you, you found out about it right then and there when we were recording. Yeah, I think I have a, um, if you go to my Instagram, at Jim McCarthy VOs, you can uh, see my reaction as I found out about it. Ugh. Yeah, yeah. He, well, he, well, he leaves us with a... a good, body of work massive body of work baby a great body of work man um cole ford man he wrote dirt road anthem for jason aldean he has his own career he's funny as hell and a big personality man great storyteller big personality i think between you and i we we said a grand total of 20 words he 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 rocked it man he can he could he definitely host words. his own you better believe it. And I need to yeah. follow up because he does. He has a film production company. He's like, yeah, send me your stuff. I did send him my stuff. And his manager, his partner was like, yeah, great reel, man. So, you know, this is something that you and I talk about all the time. The idea of like having that hustle and putting those, putting yourself out there, but then also following up regularly and consistently. And not a lot of people do that. No, but he's, he's also interestingly enough. Do you remember his other um, career? Oh, he was like a nearly professional golfer. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. I mean, you know, I know. very high profile careers in one lifetime. <clears throat> and right. And then he was, I don't think he's 40 yet. And then label owner, you know, so he's got a really successful yeah. uh, average Joe's entertainment, man. Jim Riley, That's man. Right. Episode 33. Go way back with him. We go all the way back to the University of North Texas and the Dallas music scene hustle. We end up moving to Nashville the same week. And um, he, has, like myself, has been here 24 years in Nashville and was the band leader for the Rascal Flats for 20 years. Still is. They were going to go on a farewell tour. I guess that got altered a little bit. Maybe we'll have to wait to say goodbye until next year. Yeah. It's crazy. I hope it comes back. Yeah, but Jim has written People's two really fantastic books. Yeah, yeah, we do. We do. You know, I mean, uh, but I don't know if, you know, 20,000 people want to be around each other. You Just know, quite yet. There's only one way to find out. Yeah, it's true. It's, it's really true. You, you'll be surprised. 
Mm -hmm. How about that Lindsay L? Just spray the the audience with disinfectant every five minutes. Yeah, just put it in your drink. Just drink it. Uh, Lindsay L. Yeah. So fun. Arslinger. So sassy. Yeah, Yeah, she sets herself apart by slinging an electric guitar. There's a lot of uh, chick singers out there that know three bar chords, but she can rock. She can. Enjoyed her. She was good. Then we mm-hmm. moved on to Mr. Tom Hurst, another entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. He does capitalizing everything. On, capitalizing on multiple income streams, being a drummer. He's playing a lot with the, uh, he does the, the National Predators house band. A lot. Um, I don't know if he does that, but he does his loud jams and he does that, yeah. um, the Nashville drummer jams where we do tributes to guys like Stuart Copeland and Jeff Percaro and Bonham. That's his brainchild. He has a backline rental company. He's part owner of an indoor drum line. Um, And then when I was teaching at the University of North Alabama, I passed along the gig to him. And so he's a professor. That's amazing. He's doing everything. He understands uh, the the element of capitalizing on his skill set under the umbrella of uh, what he does, his gifts and talents. And he maximizes Mm -hmm. it. He does. Episode 36, Brad Arnold. This was a, I want to say this is almost an uncomfortable episode for you because we got, it kind of got political. We got into Trump land. Yeah, we got into Trump land there. Yeah. You know, you were, you were shifting around in your seat a lot. Like, I I don't, I don't want to, okay, we're talking about politics now. Well, there's a lot of great podcasters that go face forward into politics, sex, and religion. And um, I, I definitely shy away from it. So, Rich, what are your thoughts on Trump? <laughs> no? Nah. Um, my parents might be listening. <laughs> my parents might be listening. So um, It's all good. Yeah. Brad but he, was, uh, That was a good – he was energetic. Just, you know, again, kind of goes back to what I always talked about in the beginning of the show is how humble these people are. And they, you know what it is, is that, <clears throat> what do they always say after we finish up? That was fun. Well, that was fun. Yeah, and most of uh, our guests, it's literally like they almost nearly everyone has been like, well, pff, well, that was fun. Yeah. And I think they just get really comfortable with us. And, yeah, uh, and Brad did. He felt very at home. And I, I, I really appreciate that. Well, he's definitely a lesson in good guys do win. You know, because he's just a good guy. He is. With a, with a yeah. hell of a story, uh, you know, a couple of rough spots in his life like anybody else. But, uh, you know, and he talked about him very openly and uh, very interesting, interesting uh, show. You should check it out. Episode 36. Yeah. And episode 37 is our pal Nick Graffini, who's the owner of Revoice Media. He's also a podcast expert who has launched Drummer's Resource, drummersresource.com and podcast with like, Oh my God, I think uh, nearly 600 episodes, which he can't even believe. He's like, wow, I can't believe you people are still listening to this. But as many drummers as there are in the world, he gets them on the show. He has really great um, interviews. And his family um, owns a winery over in Italy. And he's just a very, very interesting guy. A winery is crazy. Yeah, he helped us actually launch this podcast, which was great. He did. He uh, did a lot of the... uh Legwork in the beginning taught me a lot. Uh, episode 38, very pivotal episode. I think one of our yeah. most commented episodes with Mr. Uh, American Idol, David Cook. Yeah. Funny guy. We, Funny. We made use of uh, a lot of disgusting sound effects during that episode. He loved it. Yeah. Hilarious. He loved it. And his fan base... Um, I just thought that the interview had a different slant to it and had a different energy than the normal thing that he usually ha- goes through with interviews. Is it interview or interview? Is it interview? interview? Is it interview. insurance? Or a lot of people insurance? don't even really have the T in their interview. Interview. How do you, do you say interview or interview? I mean, it just depends. But a lot of people, when they're saying it quickly, you can't hear the T. Interview. Do you say metal or metal metal almost like metal with a d yeah metal. it would be hard it'd be hard to learn the english language i think i i'm still learning 
I don't have it there. <laughs> How about Ray, Ray Uzier. Uzier? Oh my yeah. God. His David Lee Roth impression on episode 39. Incredible. Oh yeah. Just some great stories. We and we're about the same age and we have similar backgrounds, but he moved out to sunny Los Angeles and became a Hollywood rock drummer, got the gig with Korn. He had a he's just super funny, super uh, approachable. He's like the guy next door, but just uh, if the guy next door had a giant double bass drum set. Yes, and uh, very approachable, very a big fan of coffee. So if you haven't tried corn coffee, I we brewed it. And Courtney and I really enjoyed it. It was, it was, it was, it lived up to its name. I didn't get to enjoy it. You know, I brought it on the road for little Johnny Hole, my drum tech, to grind up with his, because he's got a laboratory back there of, uh, you know, you of co laboratory of coffee making devices. It's like a lab. You know, you, I know what a lab is, but it, isn't it laboratory or what's the laboratory? A laboratory. It sounds more like Have a horror seen? film. <laughs> you have very interesting ways to say certain words. I know, I know, man. But anyways, I didn't get to enjoy it, but it's sitting in in Johnny's uh, road case out there on the road. So maybe it'll sit there for a year before we get to taste it. Episode 40, Neil Thrasher, one of the most accomplished uh, singer-songwriters on the planet. So we're talking like all the Aldine hits, all of the Rascal Flatts stuff. Um, wow. And first time we got to perform together on the show, first live performance on the show. You want to hear a performance that will raise the hairs on your neck. This is the episode to listen to. Episode yeah. 40. That, that was funny. He, he's funny. He could sing the damn phone book. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Which has helped him get a lot of... I mean, he writes an amazing song, but when you, your voice yeah. sounds like that and you could sing your own demo, of course you're going to cut that song. And How it looks about, like, he, you know, if you say, say something, one thing sideways to him in a bar, that he'll just freaking take you and kick your ass. He's, like, he's got that <laughs> look to him. Oh my you know? God. <laughs> Paul Paul Lime. That's right. And I said his last name the wrong way. And I uh, know. Paid for it. <clears throat> he correct he corrected you. Uh, I guess he you know totally he's did. He's paid his dues, man. He wants to hear his <laughs> name pronounced the right way. But I mean he's played on all those Lionel Richie hits. Um, mm -hmm. just a highly, uh, you know, recorded drummer in Nashville and Los Angeles and, and, uh, did all those Shania Twain records. Great guy. It was cool mm -hmm. to have him over at my place. He also, he was chock full of stories as well. Totally. So you got to check that out. Episode 41, episode 42, Josh Paul, the bass player for Dowtry. That's right. And he was also in like uh, infectious grooves and mm -hmm. suicidal tendencies. I want to say yes. So he and I really had a lot in common. A lot of the music I listened to growing up, uh, you know, thrash and uh, groove. Yeah, good stuff. That's yeah. another oh, nice man. guy. That's a humble. Oh, yeah. And and he brought his iced coffee, and I am totally missing my iced coffee. I, I haven't figured out like if I really want to brave the uh, order ahead to Starbucks and pick it up thing you know it just seems like oh who's making my coffee and did they wash their hands and ah. this post covid world is not going to do very well for you it's you're going to be like paranoid every everywhere you go well kara hasn't helped because she's a complete germaphobe you need germs i get it you need I germs you got to get the germs i'm tired of washing my hands man you're gonna freaking erase your skin i know Hey, you know what's been, uh, and I don't know, I'm just going to come out of this and ask you, do you have tinnitus? I don't, thank God. I've, I've been having it bad lately. So you're, you're waking it up in the middle of the night with your ears ringing? This one, my left ear. Snare drum ear. I guess but I think so. I've, but I mean, I've played more uh, snare drum backbeats than you have over the course of my life. You know, and you don't you don't really I mean use in ears and and stuff like that. But I mean, it's not is that real hearing protection? I would not. Well, not if you not here's the here's the disease with in ear monitors. Yes, it's blocking out the outside sound and sort of acting as hearing protection. But if you crank that sucker up, then then it's even worse because the sound is right in your ear. Yeah, it's right? hammering. 
Yeah, so I have to make sure that I don't usually go past one o'clock on my my belt pack, which is like six. I try to go between five and six. Right. There are some 43. guys that just they open it up. Yeah, forty three. Greg Morrow. Oh, what a great guy! Just come fresh off the uh, Bob Seger World Tour farewell tour, and he came. He was nice enough to come and do the interview the day before a hip surgery. Yeah, a big teddy bear of a guy. Oh, so nice. What about DJ Silver, episode 44? Another uh, entrepreneur. He uh, He's just kind of made, another guy you got to admire him for the fact that he has doubled down on his gifts and talents, and it's worked out amazingly for him. He was a Massive. first of his kind. Uh, I don't know if they took a chance on him, but they tried. I'm like, why don't we try a DJ at a country show? And uh, yep. it worked out. Massive hustle. Massive hustle, man. He is so busy. How about that Tony McAlpine, 45, episode 45, one of the greatest guitar players on the planet. Man, a few words. He had his manager with him, and we just ended up spinning a lot of his music. So right. if you guys are into tech, progressive rock, um, check out episode 45. If you like math band type stuff, if you like yeah. doing algebra while you listen to rock music, this is the episode for you. For sure. And yeah, he's got definitely a fan base. How about our buddy Keo, episode 46? He is just a lovable man about town in Nashville. If, you, if you're going to a nightclub or a showcase or to hear a live band or anywhere where there's a scene in Nashville, you're going to find Keo. And he is just a lovable teddy bear of a guy. One hell of a drummer. He really loved your ex-wife. He did. Yeah, he had a crush on her. <laughs> what would he say? Say la vie. He'd always say, how's my girlfriend? Oh. Yeah. I'd be like, she's fine. Tell her I said hi for me. Yeah. <laughs> hey, tell your girlfriend I said hi. For, tell your mom hi for me. Yeah. He told right. the Donnie Wahlberg on you. Yeah. How about that Sandy yeah, Gennaro? Uh, <clears throat> Sandy Gennaro. Yeah, he's um, a lot of good stories. He, he's the um, example of one person can change your entire life. That's right, That's because happened. he's got that great story. You guys can hear it on, on the episode. But he had the opportunity to do one of two things. This bass player wanted to chat with him as he was running out the door, and he could have said, ah, too busy, I can't talk to you, man, or do what Sandy did, which was he took the time to say hello to the guy, even the band, even though the band was running out the door, and that led to him getting the Cindy Lapper gig. So little artist known as Cindy Lauper. Yeah. One of the life changing artists of the eighties. Amazing. Life changing. Yeah, man. I, I, I sat went around and watched. Sorry. No, I sat around in my underwear and watched MTV all the time. I love those videos. Dude, I'm in my underwear right now. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I actually went back and watched that money changes everything video. Yeah. I remember that back in the day. That was a long video. It was a live video. It's live. Six minutes. Six minutes. Um, Danny Rader, uh, who another just uh, ACM loves him. They're always giving him awards for his studio work, and he's been out on the road with uh, Keith Urban playing in his band for years. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. What I loved about this episode is that we, uh, Danny and I kind of got tense at one point because he was talking about, you know, uh, looking out for the musicians and uh, his organization that he runs. I can't remember the name of it, but maybe you do. <laughs> Or he's, uh, oh, we're talking. Uh, yeah, well, it's basically the American Federation of Musicians, and he's probably also in the uh, uh, the Recording Musicians Association in Nashville. So we talked about how back in the day when I was in radio, there was a movement to start coming after radio to get compensation for the musicians, and all of us in radio were going, "Dude, what are you coming after us for?" Yeah, it's like shooting yourself in the foot. What are you thinking here? They're barely paying us. So it was an uh, in interesting conversation, and um, uh, definitely check it out. You got to love tension. You got to <laughs> love it when things get tense. <laughs> How about episode forty nine with Jim Moose Brown, who was also yeah. playing uh, playing guitar in in Bob Seger's band, but also a very established singer songwriter, uh, session musician in Nashville. We've done a lot of recording sessions together, but he wrote five o'clock somewhere for Alan Jackson. Cha-ching. Yeah. Just a little unknown hit. Wow. 
And I think it coined, it was the phrase in existence before the song. I think so. Where people would say, it's five o'clock somewhere. Yeah. Crazy. That's ha that happens a lot. You take an interesting little catchphrase and you turn it into a little country ditty that everybody can sing along and all the soccer moms can learn the learn the lyrics and, and they're in business. I'm so, you know, speaking of, like, what kind of phrase comes to mind would you want to see a song made out of? Like, well, F me running, you know? Would that be a phrase you'd want to hear a song, a country song? No, it would sound like it would be like a good parody song. Like um, Weird Al would crush that. F me running. Yeah. <laughs> Not that I don't want to drop the F bomb on your show, but I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, that's yeah. What what song audience people listening would you want to make a uh, song out of a phrase? What phrase would that be? Let us know in the comments yeah. or in the email. Oh, by the yeah. way, listen at richredmond dot com forward slash listen. And subscribe and rate and tell your friends. Yeah, and if you got some funny, interesting uh, feedback for us, uh, the Rich Redmond Show at gmail.com. Episode 50, Tommy Harden, working stiff of a drummer, man. 500 sessions a year. That's a lot of work, raising a family of six kids on music. He was Crushing a it. cool guy. Cool Definitely guy. Definitely cool. Yeah. yeah. Now, Jim, I didn't write down episode 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56. We could stop at 50, or if you have the list in front of you, let me know. I have the list right in front of me. I see Johnny okay. Garcia. He oh, was yeah. a cool guy because I didn't realize uh, he is a proud electrician. He comes from uh, he's a master electrician. roots. Yeah. Yeah. And I think he's going to help me find some uh, other workers for Big Dot. Yeah. Actually, What's your other company? I need, I need to reach out to him and say we need we need an electrical estimator for any of those anybody who's listening in the Nashville area. So uh, let me know if you know of an electrical estimator who is who is looking for a gig. We, uh, we are in desperate. <laughs> what? Electrical estimator? Oh my you would, god! You know anybody? Or? Nope. <laughs> but no. But the thing about Johnny is that it was about time for us to be in the same room at the same time and have some laughs and go down memory lane because uh, me auditioning for the Trisha Yearwood Band in 1997 is what ultimately brought me to Nashville. And Johnny was so sweet and so encouraging. He gave me the uh, gave me that opportunity. And of course, he's in my book, uh, Crash Course for Success, Five Ways to Supercharge Your Personal and Professional Life, available on Amazon. And I, it was so cool to give him a copy of the book. Great guy. Yeah. One of the big takeaways from that episode as well is finding out how family-oriented the uh, Garth Brooks and Trisha Yearwood organization is, as well as how, I guess, at one point they did double-header shows. Uh, Two a know, night. You, yeah, and that, to, to somebody who is, the you know, to the layman who does an eight, an eight nine, ten-hour day, uh, you know, doing their day job and stuff, it's like, oh, come on, you know, back-to-back -back shows. I mean, you're talking about three hours of just giving it your all, right? Yeah. And then, and then doing it again? And then doing it again after an hour break. That is pretty impressive because, you know, in, in the Aldine world, we do a 90-minute set. Right. And it's, it's a pretty easy day. So we yeah. would have to do two of those, take a two-hour break, and then do two more of those. You would be doing four of those. Yeah. Because, I mean, I think they're doing three-hour shows. Yeah, so four 90-minute shows. That's really nuts. You guys need to step it up. You know, for some reason, that's just been the model that's like, leave them wanting more, play the 24 hits, and see you later. That's right. Now, what's uh, episode 52, man? Josh Bishop. Filmmaker. Yeah, the filmmaker. Yeah, the Dwarven Knot. Documentarian. Yeah. Documentarian. Yeah. Documentarian. Yeah. yeah. Documentarian. His first job was on a Michael Bay film. Wow. Of all things. And, and he, he realized uh, really quickly he didn't want to do that. He wanted to be a documentarian or make things that are a little bit more indie. He he wanted to have a passion for his projects and really tell the stories. It's funny. We went back and watched that documentary, my wife and I, made in Japan. Yeah. And I could see the differences he was talking. Guys, we're talking about an 11-year passion project. Good documentary, right? It was. Also, fell, I, I kind of really got into um, John Anderson from that episode. The beautiful thing about these episodes is getting introduced to new music and new concepts and things that these people have done. 
And in Josh's case, he produced a beautiful music video for John Anderson and his latest uh, music that he's been putting out. Really good song. Yeah, I love that John Anderson. He's got one of those uh, very distinctive voices. You know, you know, it's him right away. And uh, it's really crazy what you reap, what you sow. Yeah. You know, in the early days of Aldine, we would do a, a John Anderson cover. Um, he had a song called The Black Sheep of the Family. Fast forward a couple of years, we ended up playing with John Anderson on the Grand Ole Opry, and we played Black Sheep of the Family. Really cool. He's good. Nice guy. Yeah. Jeff Marino for episode 53. Drummer for Darius Rucker, and we go way back to the 90s. He was just a, he's a fine fella. He and I hit it off. We Super guy. Nice. Another golfer. Yeah. I think a lot happens over the golf course. I just, I, I'm reluctant to start new hobbies right now. It seems like that's a money pit of a hobby. Very frustrating. My dad's great at it. My dad has two hole in ones. Isn't that, that crazy? Two holes in one? Two hole in ones. Is it your brother-in-law's or brothers-in-law? If you have two of them. I don't know. Wow. Brother-in-law's. You're calling yeah. me out here, man. <laughs> so, Who? Um, Jeff was, uh, yeah, he, I mean, you know, you know, you'd never want to try golf? I mean, I tried it. I played like Happy Gilmore, you know. <laughs> you hold the <laughs> golf club like a drumstick? Totally. 54. Cassie Joy. Yeah. She's got, you know, it's really funny is, uh, as I played on a record for her maybe seven years ago or something like that. And just with the power of the interweb, she reached out and was like, do you remember that you played on my record? Now I want to come and, and do your show. But she's so funny and so approachable and very talented. And she's out there. I, what I learned from her was that they, you know, they, her and her husband bought a tour bus and they just take the music to the people, man. And four chair turns on the voice. Not bad. Yeah. Not bad. 55, Chris Kulos. Kulos. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm always voicing these things, and you always say, no, dude, it's not Kulos. It's Kulos. Well, and I your, think it... And he literally, guys, he literally tells me, get back into your damn studio and say it right or you're fired. <laughs> no, he's... I'm like, at, at Ellis Island, I think it was Kulosi. You know, they took Colossi, a couple of I. Yeah. They took an S and an I off of there. Well, but I think what? I miss initially, because what we do with the process of producing the podcast, I give Rich a uh, a piece of the audio so he can listen to it. And, you know, if there's any kind of, you know, things that stand out to Rich, he'll say, hey, let's pull this section or whatever. But typically, uh, I mean, probably 99.9% .9 of the time, what you're hearing is exactly what happened in the show. But mm -hmm. I think I, I spelled his name k-u-l-i-s and you're like no dude it's c-u-l-e-o-s <laughs> there's a thing called goo goo there's a thing I called not google <laughs> i am not gonna tolerate misspellings on my watch do it or you're fired That's no it exactly wasn't that bad but there was one time you, you misspelled uh, adam schoenfeld and i was like oh no i've only been friends with the yeah. guy for 24 years that's not gonna fly you're like get back in there <laughs> and reproduce that show totally re-render it i don't care how long it drop what you're doing right now get back in there you said it through gritted teeth i remember i heard it uh, who else <clears throat> rob dennis number 56 oh man i go back so far with rob dennis another self-made man you know, when I say self-made, I mean it's somebody that can roll up their sleeves. They have a vision and they make it happen for themselves. Of course, no man is an island. He had a lot of help and he was a relationship guy. But man, what hustle. What hustle. Yeah. And if you're in need of something musically to rent in Nashville. Rack, rack and roll and audio. audio. Mm -hmm. right. and, and who was, yeah, uh, the drum roll. Number 57. And this is another episode that I had to figure out how to say his last name. because so I was like, is it Hambridge or Hambridge? And you were yeah. all like, it's Hambridge. Get it Tom right. Hambridge. Yeah. Fire. What an accomplished guy. A guy that, 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 that uh, is a Grammy award winner, three Grammys with buddy guy. Here's another guy who's so smart. He's like, well, I could just play the drums, but why not produce the artist and write all the songs that they're recording? 
Very smart guy. If you're familiar with Susan Tedeschi, who's a uh, a blues rock artist who came out in 99, 2000. And I'm very familiar with her because I was working for the home of rock and roll, I-95 in Brookfield, Danbury, Connecticut <clears throat> at the time. And when she was releasing that album, it just took the radio station by storm. Storm, I mean, yeah. Just... And the funny thing, it was such a, it's such a raw recording when you listen back to it that the imperfections are just perfect. Um, yeah. And to find out that they, uh, I think they took the first take. One of take. That of that one hit song, It Hurts So Good. Uh, and she, I think, cranked out two or three more takes, but they went with the first one. Yeah. Great story. And- and now she she has a now she's uh, recording and touring a lot with uh, her husband Derek Trucks, and I got to play with Derek Trucks. Me and the guys got to play with Derek Trucks about two years ago in the CMT Music Awards. That was fun, a lot a lot of fun. So, fifty seven guests. Congratulations, Jim, and thank you so much for uh, being the you know my angel on my shoulder, the bug in my ear, going buddy. Two a week, let's do this. Thanks for not firing me. No, it's so great. I think that people love the frick and our frack and the peanut butter and our chocolate. It really just goes together great. Look at how pale you are. Look at how golden and gorgeous I am. Um, I'm under these lights that just <laughs> blow up my, my chrome dome. I tell you what, though, I'm noticing that with age, man, my, oh my teeth, gosh. they need to be a little, I got to get a little whitening going on here, guys. What about mine? Damn it. They look much whiter than me. Okay, Ponch. Yeah, totally. I, I saw Eric Estrada at the dollar store up the street here. Um, did you? <laughs> oh, over in Studio City. I saw him about three years ago. Did you guys kind of look at each other and, you know, you're looking at him, he's looking at you and looking you up and down and go, holy crap, it's me. <laughs> like 30 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> was it, what was his name on the, the it was Ponch, right? Poncho. Yeah, it was Pon or? Yeah, Ponch. And Not it, bad. Was a, it was a show, a little show, show known as uh, Chips. Yeah, and and all the scenes were like. Yeah. That's right. The virus up. Yeah. That's right. Good stuff. Well, hey, well, this is really fun looking back at everything. And and Jim and I, uh, ladies and germs, we are going to. Go back and make sure that all this technology is lining up. Jim has the job of taking the audio from on my end and lining this all up, and I probably will put it in a little bug, and, it, and, it, and it'll yeah, you won't. It'll work. It'll be fine. You know that we're 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 evolving. Yeah. And if I don't get it out on time, he's going to be like, get it out on time, <laughs> or you're fired. Yeah, so uh, thanks again, School of Rock, for sponsoring our little show. Thanks to all of our guests. Thanks to all of you for supporting. And if you really want to dig deep, hey, you know, get a street team together. Tell your friends. Tell them to leave a five-star rating. Leave us a nice review at Apple Podcasts. We're on all the platforms. You can even watch us on YouTube. So we really appreciate it. And you have any questions, send them to the Rich Redmond Show at gmail.com. Jim, thanks, man. Oh, very uh, welcome. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> Anything else you want to know say, about me? Um, say hi to the family. What are you guys eating tonight? I love that Courtney's cooking. I have no idea. I have a feeling we're going to be going out. Oh, to a, you're going to do the restaurant thing? Oh, we'll probably do takeout. Oh yeah, yeah. Not bad. The only the only thing we've been uh, bold enough to do here in LA is to order Domino's pizza because they drop it off on your doorstep and they promise you that the pizza is burned in 500 degree temperature in an oven so we're like that sounds safe we don't have to talk to the driver it's prepaid pre-tipped and it's cooked at 500 degrees that sounds have you safe. really not had an encounter with a person in eight weeks no no i mean i go out and i run every day so i see people on the streets all the time and then we've done some mild social distancing uh gatherings where my friend jason sutter in north hollywood we sat six feet away from him on his front lawn, and then I have my friend Stuart Jean and his wife Allison. He runs the drum department at the Musicians Institute, and um, we have sat six feet away from them. And so we've been doing a lot of Zoom happy hours too. I just Zoomed with the band. Everybody caught up. Our band and crew uh, caught up with each other. And then tonight at six p.m., I'm going to be. We're going to Zoom with Stuart and Allison again. It's like you know, you know how it is when you're getting to it in a couple. It's like it seems like there's more options for social gatherings 
Oh, when well, you're the that. weird single guy, you're like uh, everybody's got is married with children, and then Rich comes strolling up as the single guy. It's so uncomfortable. But you're not single anymore. I know. I'm saying now that I'm in a partnership, um, it's easy to have more invites from other couples. Why'd you make air quotes when you said partnership? I, I actually, I, I it was so funny. I just I thought about. I thought about two gay men for some reason, a partnership, but I guess it's the same thing. You know, it's, uh, oh, we are talking. I, to each other. I do live in West Hollywood. I am surrounded by it. Well, there you go. Awkward, awkward silence. Um, <laughs> so thanks. Uh, thanks everybody for listening. Tell a friend. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time. Stay safe. This has been The Rich Redman Show. Subscribe, rate, comment, and follow us at richredman.com forward slash listen.